Okay, Niels Bohr, 1913. He figured out that electrons moved in shells around the nucleus. So you had the nucleus and there were discrete energy levels where the electrons can move around in. And that electrons with the lowest energy were these electrons that were closest to the nucleus and the higher energy ones were further away from the nucleus. Heating hydrogen can cause an electron to absorb energy and move to higher energy state. And when that electron returns to its lower energy state, it releases a fixed amount of energy as light. This is what this means here. So we have the nucleus and we have the electrons sitting in their shells. Now, if you heat up or give energy to one of these electrons, it can jump up a shell. If you give it more energy, it can jump up two shells or three shells, depending on how much energy you give it. What then happens is when that electron cools down, it will move back to its original shell, but it will release energy, and the way that it releases energy is as light. So here we have the hydrogen atom. We've got the proton in the middle and the electron whizzing around the outside. It's a happy hydrogen atom with a single electron in its lowest electron shell. What happens here is that there are other shells and with enough energy that electron can move up to the next shell. And here's the energy coming into the electron. The electron gets excited, moves to the next shell. So the electron can be bumped up into a higher electron shell, but it's not happy, it's excited. Okay, so it's excited, it's got lots of energy, it's in another shell. But as soon as that electron gets a chance, it will release that extra energy and drop back to what's called its ground state or its happy state, which is where they are all in their lowest, or the electron is in its lowest energy level. To release this energy, it releases this energy as a photon of light, which is a different colored light depending on which shell it's coming back from. And you can see here, depending on where the electron moves back from, it can release a different wavelength of light. And here's just another diagram which is showing the more energy is needed to get the electron excited from its lowest energy level. So the energy is increasing if you take it up to the third excited level that's the highest and it can release energy as it comes back. It can either come back in stages, so as in one stage, or it can come back in two stages or in three stages and each time it's going to let off a different energy which will come out as a different coloured light. Okay, there was still some limitation with Bohr's model. Why do electrons move in circular orbits? Why shells have particular energies? Why the number of electrons are restricted in a given shell, which is 2n2? And also the fact that the spectral lines didn't match for large elements. The other important thing that no one has yet explained is the mass of the nucleus being different in different atoms. In hydrogen, you would expect it's got one proton that helium would have a mass that was double the mass of hydrogen, but it didn't. It's got a mass that's four times the amount of hydrogen. So there's something else still there. Schrodinger. Schrodinger came up with quantum mechanics. And I once heard someone say that if you ever understand quantum mechanics... Um, it's, I think it's time for the world to implode because it's a very, very bizarre thing. Quantum mechanics explains why you can time travel and things like that. So don't get too much into the whys and hows. But what Schrodinger figured out was that electrons act as waves. Electrons move in regions of space surrounding the nucleus and he called these orbitals. So you can see here, this is a picture of... Schrodinger's model. Basically the electron is zipping around, zipping around, zipping around and it's in certain regions of space and he called these orbitals. 
He discovered this by observing the emission spectrum of more complex atoms. So Bohr just looked at hydrogen, Schrod Schrodinger looked at lots and lots and lots of different atoms and he came up with this model. Okay, the last scientist that you need to know about is Chadwick. And Chadwick discovered neutrons. And this is his model here. So we've got the neutrons in the nucleus in the center. And this explained the extra mass in the nucleus. What he did was bombard a sample of beryllium with positive alpha particles. So it's a little bit similar to um, Rutherford's alpha particles at the gold foil. But with this, what he did was this was a source of alpha particles and he bombarded this beryllium plate. And what happened was something came out of the other side, an unknown radiation. But this unknown radiation was not attracted or repelled by positive or negative forces. So it had to have a neutral charge. So they had no charge, these particles. So when these neutral particles were then blasted into a paraffin block, so the unknown particles were blasted into a paraffin block, they were then weighed and it was found to have an equal mass to protons. So Chadwick's experiment's a little bit complicated. Uh, what we start off with is a chamber which has produces alpha particles and that's from a polonium source and it gets these alpha particles move through this sheet of beryllium here. So a very thin foil of beryllium, similar to Rutherford's experiment. So there's your polonium source, and they pass through. What's then let off are these what we now know are neutrons, but these weren't deflected by any form of negative field. So Chadwick realised that these had zero charge or a neutral charge to them. These neutrons were then passed through a paraffin block. What this did is it then forced protons to come off the paraffin block and this gets a little bit confusing. I like to just think that he basically from the paraffin block was able to weigh these neutrons and figure out that they were the same weight of the protons. But what actually happened is these protons came through and they were put into this ionization chamber um, which was a gas filled chamber. From there he was able to work out the speed of the particles and then the mass of uh, the neutrons. And he found out that the mass of the neutrons was almost the same as the mass of the protons. So the scientists that you need to know their models of, and it shows their models here, are as follows. Dalton with the billiard ball. Thompson with his plum pudding model and discovery of the electron. Rutherford with the nuclear model with the nucleus that was the gold foil experiment Bohr with discrete energy levels of electrons rotating around the nucleus Schrodinger with the quantum physics or the electron cloud around the outside and Chadwick who's not on here um, and Chadwick discovered the nucleus Okay, so you should now be able to do chapter two questions and some booklet questions.